Hey, hey, welcome back to the podcast. This is an evolution of your higher self bonus series episode with myself and Melissa Albers. Today, we're talking about building your personal brand strategies for health and wellness professionals. But before we get started, Mel, what is your win for the week? My win for the week is um, letting my control go. So in my business, I wear all the hats. I don't have anyone helping me at all. But I know that in order for me to launch my next big offer, which is an academy for light workers, I'm going to have to let control. So I have booked in, I've interviewed one funnels expert and I have booked in an interview with a copywriter just so I can get my time back. So that is the biggest win because I'm a perfectionist. I like things my way. I need to know they're done properly and to let that go to someone else is freaking me the fuck out. But um, that's my biggest win. I let it go. So I love that for you. I yeah, it's going to make such a difference because then you can just really master your craft and there's so much creativity and work that goes behind building an academy. So, um, yeah, you're definitely going to need the help. I went through the same thing because as we're talking about today, even like building your personal brand, as a health and wellness professional, you really are a personal brand. And so handing over the reins to other people that aren't exactly you can be really really hard it can be it's like no especially especially if you feel like you've built this business from the ground up and it's like your baby it's part of your family member or something like that so that is a huge step congratulations and yeah I'm super excited for you and I know what you bring out and what you birth into the world it's going to be amazing with your little co-creators and yeah it'll be beautiful thank you and what about you Harmony what is your greatest win this week Look, I'm going to say my win is after four long, grueling years, I am finally in my final semester of my master's degree. Um, it has been a ride. It has, it has been challenging. There has been blood, sweat and tears, I tell you. Hopefully it's all worth it. It is a master in um, Chinese medicine and acupuncture. So I will be, you, you know, pulling on the knowledge of TCM acupuncture, Ayurveda and Western medicine to form my opinions about things, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah. That's and my let's, like, let's, it's, it's a bigger win than what she's telling you guys. All right. She is going to be fucking Dr. Harmony Robinson Stagg. Like that is a huge win. Like doctor, I don't know what you're studying, what all that thing is, but at the end for me, the big win is, oh my God is finally going to be deserved to have that amazing title because I know how much firsthand how much knowledge you have and how much passion you have for helping and serving other people that you know that title is so deserving so that's a huge congratulations Harmony I'm so excited for you thank you thank you so much um but yeah I think also having different aspects of yourself is part mm -hmm. of building your personal brand as well so I think it is important for health and wellness professionals to really build their personal brand and to not miss out on all parts of who they are because that's really what's going to make you a strong personal brand as well yeah and speaking about personal brands let's get into today's topic mm -hmm. um so you are like i see you as queen of personal brands like you are amazing at your personal brands and i've seen you firsthand in workshops that you've done and in the ayurveda alchemist helping other people's define their personal brand so i wanted to ask you why is it that personal branding is so critical for the health and wellness professionals and what are the first steps to defining that unique brand identity mm, yeah that's a big question but i'm going to start with mm. saying that as a health and wellness professional you're a personal brand whether you like it or not 
So even if you are a healer or a practitioner or a coach that works in another person's business or a wellness center or a yoga studio, for example, that wellness center or studio will have its own brand, that business will, but so do each of the practitioners or healers or teachers within that brand. And it's really important to understand that because if I were to go to, say, like an acupuncture clinic, but there's a certain acupuncturist that I want to see me, it's due to their personal brand that they've created really because if I didn't know them in the first place, how did I choose that one? Unless I just went off the whim and chose any and then decided I liked them because then you start connecting with who they are, which is part of their personal brand. The same goes for yoga teachers. Like you book into your favorite yoga teacher. You might, that studio might have lots and lots of great teachers and they might have some that you just don't resonate with, but you mm-hmm. resonate with the personal brand of one. And so you're always trying to get to their class. Same for Ayurvedic practitioners and coaches. One of them is going to really scream out to you and you're going to be like, I need to work with that person because mm-hmm. I resonate with them on so many different levels. So the personal brand is what is going to set you apart from your business um, not from your business, sorry, from other parts of other people's businesses and other people being practitioners themselves. It gives you that sense of identity within the the genre that you're working within. So a whole bunch of physios, what physio are you going to go to? The one you resonate with the most. So whether you like it or not, you are a personal brand. We've done another episode on creating the soul of your business, and that is also really important. So your business has its own energetic entity, and so do you as the practitioner or the healer. And so what we're talking about today is building that personal brand around yourself. Um, So I think that is important because there are so many different health and wellness practitioners and professionals out there these days. You really need to let your light shine and, and let people know who you are. So the way that we do this is really defining our brand voice. That's super important. People in their head, often you go, you say personal brand and straight away they'll be thinking of their brand, their colors, their logos, and all of that does definitely play a part. But what is the most distinct is a brand voice. Mm -hmm. And as we spoke about in our podcast episode on the soul of your business is your own unique methodology and framework. So it doesn't matter whether um, Ayurvedic practitioner one or two or three all work in the same niche, say women's health. I have my own unique methodology, the higher self method. And so that is part of my personal branding. Whereas some, maybe the other two don't have any sort of unique method or anything about them. And so someone chooses me on my, like my personal branding and my unique methodology. So that's all part of it as well. So if you haven't listened to that episode, go back to that one, which is how to create the soul of your business. Then you want to have a certain, with that brand voice, you want to have a certain feel. So if if part of your personality is you, you're you humorous and you like making little jokes or you're a bit lighthearted, then really let that be seen and heard and felt. Be really authentic with that. Don't try to come in and all of a sudden be like this really sort of serious, eloquent speaking person. Like that just wouldn't suit me. Like, you know, I'm always sort of like have a bit of a giggle, a bit lighthearted. I'm professional, but at the same time I'm also very like, you know, open and modern and and all of that even though Ayurveda says like this ancient wisdom I'm not going to come in here and be like I'm sort of like a monk that goes and meditates in a cave every day and pretend to to be that person as my personal brand because that ain't me and people will very quickly pick up on that and see you as a fraud or an imposter so you don't want to do that you want to highlight your strengths and understand your weaknesses but you want to let people see your strengths what do you want to get across to your audience what is this the the personal brand that you are what is that message and then we think about not only is the personal brand our voice but also the appearance of our brand so that's where it does come down to being consistent with colors and logos and all of those things Um, but also how you show up and how how you you know, show up in your own appearance. For example, if you are, you know, trying to 
make a really beautiful sort of serene, calming brand and, you know, it's all about, I don't know, like yoga nidra and soft meditations and then your brand colour, <laughs> Mel swaying. See how my voice changed then? Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I started speaking in this soft voice that's really not me, even though <laughs> do do yoga and meditation and all that I've just got a different brand pet presence but say this person was more like that and they chose as their brand colors hot pink with black polka dots there mm. would just be this misalignment there you'd be mm. like well, like who are you or what are you trying to be because it just doesn't match that personal mm. brand like is it you is it not you it's leaving people guessing but if you have someone who is a yogi and does meditation and breath work, but they're a little bit quirky and they're a bit fun and they're sort of like want to make it this sort of enjoyable sort of uplifting experience, then, yeah, maybe the hot pink polka dot person and the branding could be cool. You'd be like, oh, my God, <laughs> that's something different. Um, so I think that it's really important to, to get across the feel that you want, not only in the brand, but in your visuals and I know Mel you're amazing at that you're so good at branding people um you help me with my branding colors and all of those type of things and yeah I think it's it's really important understanding your brand voice and the other thing is if you are getting people like Mel is to help her in her business now is if they're not obviously they're not you okay and if they're yeah. new to you Business, you need to have a really clear defined brand voice yeah. and branding personal branding so that you can hand that over to them so that they can really align and work with that if you don't have that it's so much harder for them to do the work for you and you'll both be unhappy with the work that's being mm -hmm. produced because they don't have a, a personal branding to to follow to help you out in your mm -hmm. business so I think they're really important um uh, ways to get started and then the other thing is value position like how are you positioning yourself in the market because that all comes down to your personal branding so if you want to if you know you target sort of like high-end luxury but you're always showing up in a ripped black hoodie with lint and dog fur all over it it's probably not going to hit the mark with the people you're trying to target so you want to make sure that you understand your value position and that it suits your brand personality or mm. the you're going the personal brand that you're getting across if you um uh you know maybe were to help new mothers who are really sort of already feeling a little bit stressed and anxious about just getting everything done let alone like trying to keep up appearances but then you're going dressed in like this hot pink skinny tight dress and heels and you're doing a home visit like that might not make them feel amazing. So work out your value position and how that works with your personal branding as well. Mm -hmm. I think one, one thing that is, is huge when it comes to personal branding is don't try to be anyone you're not and be really authentic in that. So Mel, what role would you say authenticity plays in personal branding and how can professionals ensure their brand remains true to their values and their mission yeah definitely and it's a huge thing out there and I think to um, have a brand is to be authentic because a lot of what I'm finding is you know in the health and wellness professional and the spiritual community that they think to be a health and wellness professional has to be a certain look and a certain feel. So everyone is like a robot. Everyone, colours are the same. The way they turn up and they wear, mm, and the way they speak is all the same, right? So who the fuck are you, right? You are a personality that has journeyed through life. Allow that to shine. So, you know, the biggest key factor in terms of personal branding is to allow that core essence of you to shine through if you swear say fuck right like and and embrace that because there's been so many times in in earlier in my career and not even in business in my corporate career I try to fit into a box I showed up in in the version of 
Mel that I thought other people wanted me to be in the role, right? And when I smashed through that and had the confidence within myself to be who I am and allow that to shine through, that is when you're going to call in your tribe. That is when you're going to call in your community. Because how are people in a sea of health, and like in a sea of yoga people or Ayurveda health coaches or life coaches or whatever, PTs, how are you standing out? And through authenticity is are you showing what your mission is? Do people know what you stand for? Do people know why you're doing what you're doing? Do, can people see and feel your values, right? And through that, I think how we can or how you can show your authenticity is a lot of the things that Harmony says, dress to how you are. Don't be someone that you're not. What are you wearing? What are the colours reflecting? Is it re reflecting the core of your essence, right? And the most important thing is your story. And I think we spoke about this in the, the last podcast episode of building the soul of your business is that storytelling, sharing your stories because that is integrity. There are so many people that are out there that are quote-unquote qualified but they're not embodying or they haven't journeyed and they've got a, a an accreditation or certification and showing up in this box. But where is the integrity and how you can stand out from the rest and calling your people is sharing your stories, sharing that experience. So if you're on social media and you're doing social media posts on giving um, a, say, an educational post, in that post, weave in your story, weave in your um, your journey, right? Show the people who you are. And I think that is the most um, how authenticity plays in personal brand. It is beyond the colours. It is beyond the logos. You are the personal brand, you. And how are you going to stand out from the rest of the crowd? So, for me, how I help my clients through personal brandings and, and what I've taken my th myself through is a framework called Vibes, right? What is that visual, uh, that visionary identity? That is your brand personality, everything that Harmony spoke about, right? And ensuring that vision, um, that visionary identity is across all platforms, ensuring that it's consistent, right? So if you look at you know, um, let's say McDonald's, because everyone knows McDonald's shouldn't be saying Macca's on a, you know, <laughs> longest podcast, but let's go with Macca's, right? So, you know, Macca's, they are consistent. If you go to Macca's on Instagram, I don't even follow them, but let's say you go to Macca's on Instagram or onto TikTok, onto their website, it's consistent. What is that visionary identity? How are I you looking? Sorry. How are you looking? I'm actually so intrigued to look up Maccas on Instagram now. Exactly. And, you know, and now you've said that, I'm like, oh, my God, I need to check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone after this episode is going to be, like, um, going and searching up Maccas on Instagram. Um, the second the I is that intuitive integration, right? So when you're making these decisions on creating a personal brand, I want you to close in and feel how your body's feeling especially with colors we can be stuck on pinterest scrolling about colors but tap into the colors and go oh how does this make me feel i never ever ever thought that i would have green in my personal branding like green is not a color i love i love to be surrounded by green and mother nature but it's not something that i would have what i thought i would have on my personal branding but when i tapped into it and i felt in like oh, green is wealth and abundance and it's part of my aura, my healing aura. That feels so good in my body that I need to have it part of my part of my brand, right? And making sure that it aligns with your, um, um, your values. Um, so bringing that int intuitive integration, does it align with my core values? Does it feel good? Give, allow yourself a couple of days to give, 
for yourself to have feedback. You know, it might feel good at the time, but then it's like, oh my God, like, no, that feels yucky. Um, and E is that energetic expression, right? So that, um, what Harmony talked about, which I won't go too much, is like crafting that brand voice. How are you sounding? Are you fun and playful and conversational, conversationalist, or are you more professional and straightforward, right? Um, sorry, the garbage truck is here, so my dogs are going on. <laughs> And messaging with purpose, what I um, spoke about before with storytelling. So, so that takes me to the next one. Soulful storytelling is infusing your story, infusing your wisdom, infusing your journey through that. That's all a part of your branding. Um, so remember when you're creating your brand, do the vibes, the visionary identity, the intuitive integration, vibrational visuals, energetic expression, and soulful storytelling. And just be yourself. Like have yeah. fun, have fun and be yourself and allow that to shine. And don't be scared as you're evolving and you're growing, change out your colors, chop off your hair or change the color of your hair like harmony. Don't be afraid to push the boundaries and stand out and do not conform to the industry standard because you are so unique and I want that to shine and stand out and your brand gets to evolve and change just as you do. Mm. I also think one of the other misconceptions about personal branding is that it sits underneath your business banner. So a lot of people, you know, when they first are creating their business, they might have a business title. So say mine's Harmony Inspired Health and I have Harmony Inspired Health and then I have the Harmony Inspired Health Clinic where I see women with hormonal conditions. I have the Ayurveda Alchemist Academy where we do the trainings in it and then I have the business mentorship. And within there is like, you know, me as a personal brand. But actually what it is is Harmony, Robinson Stagg, myself, the personal brand is up the top and then it feeds down into the mm. business, Harmony Inspired Health. So I think a lot of people don't realise that, that you the personal brand is actually the top tier of the business. It doesn't come underneath the the main company it is above that and so that is why it's so important because that will set the the direction the feel and everything of all of those other entities of your business mm -hmm. so it's really important to master that personal brand and that's often one of the things I teach my students is you know flipping that narrative of oh I'm going to create a studio called lotus well-being studio or something and mm -hmm. and i'm gonna have this offer and that offer and whatever and this is my framework and i'm like that's lovely but actually you the person sit above all of that your personal brand comes first mm -hmm. and that's important to understand as a health and wellness professional you really can't escape it and if you are escaping it then you're probably like you might be doing all right you might be getting like clients through one of the companies you work for or, or whatever but you know really up leveling and standing out as that health and wellness professional that comes with being a personal brand as well especially in today's time and place but if anyone of you guys listening to us would love help with your personal branding or would love some personal one-to-one -one mindset and business strategy coaching mel and i offer a joint program where we are both your coaches and mel really helps you unlock all those limiting core beliefs really gets into the mindset so that when i give you the strategy then you can step into that wholeheartedly step into it as your higher self and just watch your business go bananas in a good way so if that is something that interests you please reach out to us on instagram harmony inspired ayurveda or i am melissa alvers and we can set you up with a call or something like that if you want to chat more um, and let you know more information all right everyone thank you so much for listening let us know what you thought of the episode by taking a screenshot of you listening and tagging us on our instagram accounts namaste everyone